Thank you for those contributions. And now we go to the final summations. And after these summations, we then have food, refreshments. And so well, let's uh, go into the summations straight away. Robert Krulwick. Uh, Robert Krulwick, he is going to, uh, to lead as the last uh, speaker for his side. He'll do the summation. And then we hear from John Siegenthaler. So, Robert, to you. Well, I'm not going to talk a long time, even though I have 10 minutes, huh? 10 minutes, yeah. I'm not going to use that. Uh, I'm going to just remind, particularly some of the questioners on that side, what, we, what we're standing for here on our side. Uh, no, we don't believe reporters too much. That's all we're saying. We didn't say we don't believe reporters at all. We just say we don't believe them too much. And it's not so terrible in my mind to say I don't believe anybody too much. We would only ask of reporters and of journalism, both the people and the institution, that the people and the institutions remember that credibility, believability, is the core value. It's all that reporters have. At National Public Radio, we used to have a, a I thought this was and remains, an extraordinarily good device. At the end of having written your copy, having cut your tape, we were told, before you go on the air, summon up all the people that you have mentioned, summon up all the people that you have referred to, and bring them up in your mind right into your eyeballs. And say your script right into their eyeballs. And if you can't look them in the eye, each and every one of them, the ones that you were talking about, the ones that you quoted, cutting them here and then cutting them there, the ones that you referred to. If you have to avert your eyes at any point, rewrite. Because if you can't face them with your version of the truth, then you can't deliver that version of the truth. Because you owe them, the people that you talked to, or the people that you investigated, at least that much conscientious attention. So what our side is asking is not that we you know, say all journalists go home. That would not be very self-serving in our case. And some of us have to earn livings and raise children on what we make. But what we would ask is that journalists and journalism remind itself and themselves that when you make your reporters celebrities and stars, and you can call them by their first names, Tom and Peter and Ted and Barbara and Cokie, Everybody knows, oh, we know Koki, we know Tom. That that is, of course, that's a show business thing. Those sweet pans at my network, when we come on, you know, the prime time live tonight, and you see Barbara, no last names needed, sitting in a chair, and the big camera swoops down, and the big signage, tonight, ABC News, probably with Barbara. Richer than anyone she'll speak to tonight, more famous than anyone she'll talk to tonight, more powerful than anyone she'll speak to. <laughs> that something odd has happened there that the person who is to be the fly on the wall observer, the person who is to be the champion of the people, the person who is to take it down and report it, has suddenly become a millionaire celebrity, more famous, more weighty in some television sense than any of the people she'll be talking to tonight. When journalism and journalists do that, it's not unusual for people watching the TV to not associate themselves with their person's champion, their reporter, because they don't make as much as her, they're not as well known as her, and they're not a star like her. She becomes an other. And when you do that, in order to make money and so forth, which is understandable, you should be aware that there is a price that you pay with credibility, but you have to watch. That when you give these people so much time, as they do on MSNBC, and as they do on the Fox News, and they're just standing there reading through these things with about Monica Lewinsky, and they're just looking on the one hand, and the anchor's always saying, so, uh, Jackie, what do you think? And she said, hold on, I'm just reading it still. That it's palpable, it's obvious that there's a pressure in the room that is creating a pressure to say something, to make noise, because we're on. But that's not journalism. That's something else. That's called we're on-ism, whatever. <laughs> And when you have all these people wake up in the morning, along with the five and a half billion earthlings who are waking up in the morning, all going about their business, and when these reporters wake up 
and all go to the same street corner to look at the same ice skater who bucked the knees of the same other ice skater, and they all gather around while the other five and a half billion minus two people are going about the... You do wonder a little bit, why did they all go there? All of them. John Glenn is a nice man. John Glenn is a hero. John Glenn is a nice fellow. But all Glenn, all the time? And you hear that. And when you see the millions, and you watch the celebrities, there is a price you pay. So all our side asks is not that the journalists go away, but the journalists look in the mirror from time to time, take some stock of what they're doing and what it looks like to their customers, and then pull back a bit, and, and or calm down a bit. I'm not against lowering the salaries of these people. I would love, to, I, I make a good salary myself in TV. It's a very good salary. My wife works at the New York Times. I make a lot more money than she does, and I don't want to give it back. But <laughs> I know how it seems. I know how it seems to her at the New York Times to see the salary multiple that I make. And all I'm doing is saying it, you know, electrically, and she's writing it. Why does saying it make so much, is so much more valuable? I love it, but I don't exactly know why. It leaves, however, a funny feeling. If they just make some corrections in all these departments, that's all we're arguing, we still won't believe reporters very much, but we will believe them a little more. And that's all we ask. Thank you, Robert. Oh, that was Mr. Robert Kulwich, of course. Now, for the last speaker, Mr. John Siegenthaler. John. 